Okay, so first we're gonna take off the sway bar links and ultimately the sway bar. So here's the first step. Removing this bolt right here. Now you're gonna to go to this position. Take off these frame mounts for it, for this again for the sway bar. Next step is to remove the lower shock mounting bolt, like so. Now, now we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, bolts, the lower bolts from the uh, uh, the ball joint, like that. And we're going to remove it from the spindle in a moment, like that. There we go. Be careful. You got everything out of the way, and nothing's going to fall and collapse on you. Ryan's already got the sway bar loose, so that's helpful. Here we are, separated, like that. Here's a quick comparison of the two. The uh, OEM Fox on the left, Toy Tech on the right. They look similar, but the Toy Tech is set at about a two inch lift height. And of course it's adjustable for preload and such, so that once you start loading things on, adding parts to your Tacoma or your truck, you're gonna want the adjustability of the Toy Techs over the uh, OEM Fox shocks. So what we're doing now is to get the long bolt out of the upper control arm, the, a little bit of the, of the body's in the way of the bolt head. So what we're going to do is instead of cutting it, we're just going to slightly bend it out of the way like you see here. So that we have room to get this bolt, which is probably a solid 12 to 14 inches long, out the front. Does that sound right, Ryan? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Then we'll bend it back when we're done. So just be gentle. Just move it just the minimum. And then you can, as you can see, here he goes. He's starting to wiggle it out. It'll take some finesse, but it'll come out eventually. Yeah. Then you have to worry about cutting and such. Go. So when you remove the upper control arm from the spindle, you, won't, you don't want to put too much pressure on the brake lines and AVS and stuff like that. So what I like to do is take a little rope ratchet or a bungee cord, and I'll put it through the hole where the uh, sway bar goes, and I'll just attach it somewhere nice and rigid so that we can keep the spindle and everything nice and close so we don't put too much pressure on on all these lines here come on baby so down in here is a little bracket that we want to try to loosen to move out of the way so we can get the uh, upper control arm bolt out of the way it's kind of a hassle here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the hamburg upper control arms next to the factory upper control arms. There's just no comparison in the beef and the features that the uh, Cambergs have. So much better tubular design. They're excellent. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start assembling the upper control arm. This is from Camberg and uh, it does require a careful adherence to the instructions so you get all the supplied parts in the right order. So they supply a, a diagram, which is excellent. And uh, it all comes supplied. You need to build the uh, upper control arm in exact accordance to that layout before you put it in. So we're not gonna show that going together. Just follow the order of all the pieces and you'll be fine. Double and triple check. And then that's what we're gonna assemble right now. So here we are assembling it. We like to go fairly liberal on the, on the grease as we assemble these, the bushings, like this, it comes, uh, the cambric upper control arms come supplied with grease. Make sure you put a fair amount in there. Um, that'll pay off in the long run so you don't get premature squeaking. You also so, will have that zerk fitting on there too, which is awesome, so you can apply grease later on, but I do like to go nice and liberal in the beginning. Go. All right, so the whole plan here is to finagle this big, giant, long bolt back into this slot in the in the bucket here and we'll want to make sure that you follow the diagram to a T. We want to get the this outside washer here um, and then an inside washer on the inside of this bushing. Same, th same for when you get it back into this uh, rear point here you want to make sure you have one of those flat washers on the inside and one on the outside. So we're just gonna work at slowly 
getting this bolt back through and assembling it how camber lays out in the instructions for you All right, so we're getting the uni ball set up tighten into place on the top of the spindle there they're torqued into place carefully. We've made sure all the spacers, there's a careful instructions that come with Camberg that tell you how to set this up. And so follow those carefully and, uh, and then assemble it up. So Ryan's taken the new Boss Aluma 2.5 coilover. He's placed it uh, into place. In a moment, he's gonna continue uh, putting in the top, the three top bolts. He set it in place in the bottom and uh, we're gonna finger tighten everything down. So now we're, tight we're tightening down the supplied bolts with the Toytec uh, Toy coilover. OEM is post, these are bolts that go down into the top hat of the, of the coilover. We're gonna go ahead and torque these down. So we want to say right now is, um, so this side, even though it's not, everything hasn't been torqued all the way down yet, we want to mention that uh, even though it's basically done, not to torque and, and finish it because you want to keep the, um, the sway bar and the parts loose because we're going to work on the other side. So, so keep that in mind, uh, not to button things up until both sides are done. So now we're close to buttoning it all up and and uh, we just need to get the tie rod and the sway bar uh, attachment points put back, of course. And then we're going to torque everything to spec, uh, but we still have one more thing to do, which is to put in the sway bar um, drop brackets. And so let's go get to work on that. And so these are the supplied uh, spacer blocks that we're going to put in for the, uh, uh, for the sway bar. And um, they're simple to lay them in place and uh, and put the supplied hardware in up in there like that. So here it is all buttoned up. We've got the tie rod and the sway bars reconnected. We've got the spacer over on the right for the, um, the sway bar drop. And here we have the absolutely beautiful setup of the Toytec Boss Aluma 2.5 in conjunction with Camberg's spectacular uh, tubular Cromoly upper control arms. We put the dust cap over the uni ball there and uh, we're ready to put on some tires and wheels and button this thing up.